Welcome to API Days Helsinki. I have this time here uh, Professor Marco Stefanen from Tampere University. Uh, a good uh, addition to our uh, kind of collection of professors in this event. We have, I think, two or three professors. Um, but you are talking about API monetization, which is a hot topic. But before I let you loose on that topic, what have you learned or can you share some experiences from this weird remote spring that we are all having? Yeah, thanks Marikka. Well, yeah, it, it was a quite a hectic time in mid, mid March when we changed all, all our university teaching in remote mode in, in about two days and, and that was a quite a big effort and I uh, have to say that even though we thought that we have been doing online teaching a while there was still plenty of things to learn when, when you do that on that big scale. So it was kind of scaled agile education in two days <laughs> or Absolutely. something like that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but you look still alive and, and it, it's good that you survived until the end of uh, the term. Uh, it was especially good since we have that joint free introduction to API uh, economic course. So it, it, it is good for the students too that you are still there giving trades. But um, so without further ado, take us uh, to API monetization, please. Thanks, Marukka. Yeah, thanks. All, uh, so, so the API monetization is, is the topic and uh, here's the agenda for this presentation. Uh, first, some uh, introduction ideas, and then we go to the some of our recent results and uh, some explorative study on, on the, what is the status at the moment here. And then I will present to you the, the four models of API monetization. So, so the basic basic uh, uh, taxonomy on, on the monetization models. But the first introduction and uh, this presentation has been done with uh, my colleague uh, Said S. Mati Safa and then me for, for you. So, so just to remind you that there's uh, plenty of possibilities for business. So, so API is not just a just a gateway or something uh, technical issue, but plenty of different uh, possibilities to do business and, and uh, some healthy business also. And on the the bottom there's a pl couple of examples. Uh, about the, the money thing, so so there's quite a big money also uh, related to APIs as a private or IPO uh, public offerings. So so Algolia, Twilio, Centgrid, for example, would have been getting some some serious money on that front. Uh, and also, I would like to remind you that uh, having that kind of a technology or the, uh, the possibility it also needs that you really need to understand the value creation so so putting your attention on the right hand side so when you are trying to provide some value it really means that you have to think about what you are offering what is the expectation from the customer side and how those things match and that that is uh, something that needs to be keep kept on mind now throughout the uh, designing your your new business offerings. There are plenty of different options where the growth can come and and uh, getting from the top towards the bottom. I think that uh, becomes more hard or requires at least more work. So so API might boost your innovation internally. It might uh, give you possibilities to collect data through the API, or it might be source of new revenue stream. And, and in the end, it might be also a way how you can expand your ecosystem. So there are plenty of this, this kind of possibilities. But then uh, what, what is actually the status at the moment? And, and for that purposes, we made sort of a, a explorative study with side and, and uh, next I will present our uh, findings on that that uh, study. We had this kind of uh, uh, sample 226 organizations. We, we sampled on, on that uh, that study and, and it, that includes top 100 companies in, in Finland and 
126 other organizations. And uh, the results so demonstrate that about one third of the companies have open API and about two thirds didn't have such an open API. And what other things we found so, so when we consider the distribution over industries, uh, there were industrial companies, technical companies, consumer services, then a little bit less on, on the other, uh, other industries. And, and then on the right hand side, uh, you will see that the, in some, some of these industries, there is more open APIs than the others. So technology industry basically has the most of uh, uh, open APIs and, and then a little bit less than a grand total number for, was a little bit less than 300. So on average, those, uh, those uh, companies have uh, about three open APIs on average, but as you can see, it's, it means actually that uh, that's on, just an average and, and the variation is uh, much larger. So what, what are the type of APIs there were? So open APIs uh, on the left-hand side on screen, so 30, uh, eight, eight uh, PCs, open APIs, partner APIs, 18, then some unknown type that were not uh, defined, and then, then a couple of that were also public and partner APIs. And then the first table about the monetization is the right-hand side here. So, so the classification in the rows and, and then in the columns, different type of monetization. And you can quite easily may see that there's uh, quite much of uh, free APIs provided and just a couple of those have uh, direct uh, pricing uh, in included. And if we go a little bit more deeper on these revenue models, so uh, we can have a couple of uh, examples here. So Cargotex, Sunto, Stura, Inso, APIs, and, and, and how they are describing, describing at the moment. And, and also we were a little bit surprised that uh, there were so, so few uh, freemium uh, models in, in this uh, sample we would expect uh, compared to the international comparison that there would be more, even more than just, just a, uh, five, five or six cases which have a free or premium type of pricing. We also noticed that uh, there's a lot of uh, room for improvement in, in documentation. Not so many of uh, uh, those APIs were documented well and, and so, showing that what, what are the target customers, B2B developers were mentioned, but uh, quite many of those were not, not well documented at the moment. And some, some more uh, ideas also what we noticed during that. So, so API development side, SOAP architecture was the most popular there. REST architecture was most popular in partner or mixed open APIs and uh, there is a couple of a uh, couple of companies uh, mentioned also in the in the right hand side, but I'm not going in in very deep deep with this uh, this presentation. But uh, just to save some some more uh, time to uh, discuss on on the four types of uh, API monetization models, and, and uh, basically we can see that the there's, there are these four different types. So we can have a free monetization, meaning that basically there is no monetization, but the strategy behind uh, designing and, and uh, opening API might have uh, to do some uh, with some other, other logic. Then there are the, the ones that can be categorized as a consumer pace, consumer gets paid or then the indirect uh, way. And we are now in this presentation focusing on, on these three. So, so where the money actually starts moving with the free case, it might also mean that you, you as a user, you are the product, 
yourself so so somebody is using your data your access or then this could be also the case when uh, you might might be also the test bed or your uh, providing the beta testing version when when a company is taking the baby steps towards perhaps more more uh, uh, more solid or more strategically uh, considered options in, in monetizing the APIs. But let's go forward with the, these three and, and focusing first on the consumer pays option. And this can be distributed also in, in five different ways. So pay as you go, tired version, freemium, point based or transaction fee. And then the next slide I will give us uh, sort of uh, examples on each of these. So pay as you go is the utility based model where the consumer pays uh, periodically. So for example, in every month, you may pay with Amazon Web Services. There's no minimum use, you just pay based on the, uh, when when time, time goes on, then, then you have to pay, for example, based on the amount of bandwidth storage or other, other type of uh, costs that might, might be incurred based on, on your consumption. And then the, the other option in this, this case might be that it could be tired. So, so you may have this kind of bronze, gold, platinum levels and you can uh, buy your option and, and uh, uh, the breadth of features beforehand. And, and then when you are at certain level, then it means that you can have a uh, certain quantity or certain bread of services at, at your disposal. And then the other three ones in, in this consumer paced uh, uh, path are the freemium, point based, or transaction fee. If we start on the right hand side, so transaction fee, I think that this is quite uh, obvious for all of you. So Based on each transaction, you might have a fixed or percentage based uh, pricing, but the transaction is, is the trigger that uh, ma makes a charging. In the middle, there's a point based. So you might have a, let's say, certain quantity, quantity of uh, points that you can uh, buy beforehand. This is also something that you may uh, typically also, also uh, get billed beforehand so you can as, as a supplier you may get your money before the service is spent or the used and then this kind of pay as you go services are the other close relatives for these and then on the left hand side the premium one I think that most of you are also familiar with this so so you may have a uh, sort of basic level there and, and then then with the additional features or more use you, you then might have a different tire pricing strategies there. Dropbox is one, one example from this. And uh, one of the key things with the freemium I think that is, is how, how you can actually uh, get your free users towards the, the priced the priced, uh, user category. So how, how to make that kind of change and, and uh, make sure that the, the volumes in, you know, also the business side in, in monetized side are, are the large enough. What many people you, you used to, as, as an individual consumer at least, might, might be using the free version and, and they are happy with that. But this is something that really, really is uh, change, changing over time, the, the latest example just just very recent example is is about the Strava, which changes the the levels what you can use as a free and and uh, what services and and features are available. Without money and 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 that's that's how it goes and, and it, it it may change over time. If we go forward, so so towards the consumer gets paid part. So so there's also a couple of options, the revenue share affiliate and then credits to bill. And, and the, the middle one, the affiliate also can be separated in three. 
but if we take look for the first two, so revenue share credits to bill, so revenue share is typically used with the ad revenue share when the provider offers the ad platform to consumers and, and then there are some advertisements. And then the portion of the revenue is paid back to the consumer based on fixed or percentage. And, and credits to bill, uh, the provider credits to consumer by reducing the overhead with the integration. This is basically the affiliation and the revenue sharing model. This is one, one, one option. And if we go to the affiliate, the third option with the consumer gets paid model. So this includes three different options. You may have a cost per click type of thing like a Google AdSense has. Uh, the consumer gets paid by every click sent to the merchant side and then cost per action. There will be a commission if the certain action is done. You may get that kind of action linked with the filling the form or making purchase or something like that. Or then there's a referral and, and that means that you can have a one time or recurring which drives the customers towards the provider. And that's that's one 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 example also. So there, there, there were those three different options with the consumer gets paid. And, and then uh, the final one, the indirect, this includes several different options also. So the, uh, there's actually six ones, content acquisition, content syndication, software as a service, internal use, business to business and business expansion options. And, and the middle ones have all, every one of those have a, uh, three, two, two different ways. So let's take a closer look also on these. And content acquisition basically means that when, when you have uh, allowing submission, for example, writing, updating, accessing and so forth, content by third parties, YouTube, Twitter are examples on this. Uh, similar way, Twitter is an example on content syndication, you can distribute providers content via third parties. And, and then there's an internal, so complementing the internal service product features. For example, internal employees can create a customer facing capability for the company. For example, Twitter is also using. So you can also see that uh, there are several different uh, simultaneous possibilities for, for different monetization op options. And if we go forward, so software as a service uh, type of thing. So, so the complementing the core software and, and it's offering, that's one, one way quite often used. One of the Finnish examples is the same files which uh, make, makes this kind of way. And then there's possibilities also for the upselling. So software as a service users can pay for the app in, in that form. And, and a business to business format is the last one. So a customer partner cases. So, so then you can have a, this kind of uh, integration through your API. So uh, we had this kind of a short introduction to different ways to monetize. And uh, as you see, see it means that the, um, the monetization is not, not only about the pricing things, but it ha can have also uh, other, other ways how you can uh, make your uh, business model to have a value for your customers and, and then also the, uh, the money can come not only from your product or service, but it can be an indirect flow of money as these uh, last six examples here will show you. And it's not only about selecting some particular monetization and sticking with that, but you can have a, uh, the portfolio of different monetization options. So just to conclude here is that the current situation in Finnish industry shows that the, the industrial companies are taking these steps towards the digitalization. Uh, we were a little bit uh, surprised perhaps depending on our uh, sample here, but uh, otherwise, uh, in, in, even with that kind of limitation, that the high potential sectors such as healthcare, 
we didn't uh, came up with uh, our, our uh, exploration here. Uh, it seems that the most popular revenue model at the moment is free, and, and therefore firms haven't yet very clearly announced their customer segmentation. And also, it seems that there's plenty of room for improvement in, in uh, make, making the documentation better and, and better available. And also, I would like to remind you that API is so much more than just a gateway. You really need to think creatively differently, understand that even, even the niche business, if it's scalable, it can be a large business. It might be wise to start more like inside out practice internal APIs and then utilize the internal use of uh, APIs and, and then getting forward, then you can may, maybe expose your partner APIs to business partners or, or getting even to public APIs with a uh, determined uh, monetization model and pricing strategy. And finally, there are many different uh, options for monetization. You can use free consumer pays, consumer gets paid or indirect and, and all those variations there. And then the choice between these depends on which uh, business model you may have and, and how you actually see how you are creating the value, value for your customers. Thank you for your attention. Marika, do you have some, something on your mind? Thank you. Uh, it was a really good uh, kind of deep dive almost into the Finnish API world and, and the world of API monetization. It was a really good thing that you kind of pointed out those indirect uh, models there because I think that a lot of times you kind of get stuck to thinking of, of the direct models only. Absolutely. Um, yeah. and, and I think that the, the point was making here that the indirect models are, are really uh, kind of even more powerful in, in a way. But um, what were the kind of major um, surprises? I mean, you mentioned that you were surprised about certain industries and you mentioned that you were surprised about these kind of uh, free uh, models and, and, and those sort of things. So do you have any insights of like why that is or what kind of companies that applies to so who are those 34 percent of companies that have the api and why they, why do they have it yeah uh, of course there's a as a researcher I have to say that there are always limitations with the mm. and, and the biases but however we we take a look on on the publicly and, and freely available information on on the uh, top 100 based on revenue companies in Finland and we would expect that these companies have already done these things and and, and uh, during the past years there has been so much uh, possibilities so so much uh, international examples yeah. what are the options so so that is something that I, I would expect that almost every one of those 100 top 100 companies would would have something available already at least some some sort of public API to share their data, or not not even monetizing anything, but uh, just sharing the data at some point. But even in 2020, they did they didn't yet have. Yeah, it's actually that there's a lot of those companies in top hundred. Uh, I mean, I I went through them <laughs> like door to door actually, uh, or or inside a lot of meeting rooms like some years ago. I, I think three four years ago, and. Uh, at that time, it was surprisingly little amount of, of companies that actually had uh, APIs or had uh, considered to expose those APIs Absolutely. that they had. Yeah. And now we are seeing actually some of the companies that are present also here in API Days Helsinki, like Abloy and, and a few others that are actually coming out and saying, okay, now we have the API, now we are yeah. actually doing stuff with it. And Kone and, and a few other of the top hundred. So, it's interesting what has happened in actually like three, four years. Yeah. There's a, a dramatic change in some of the companies. Yeah, I, yeah, I and absolutely. We, we yeah. know, know that there's a internal development happening, but not yet public. Yeah, exactly. And that's, that's, that's fine. And that's, that's a good thing. But uh, st still, yeah. I would 
expect to some some more uh, public visibility because we know know also I had this list on on what what are the options and mm. then there are several options that you can benefit also your internal development if you yeah. open yourself a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, like when we were writing the API Economy 101 book and, and, and also doing the course material, I mean, like we were both deep diving into all of those kind of researches and cases even then. And, and that was a very kind of, there was very strong evidence in research papers, even with case studies that showed that if you actually concentrate on giving uh, the APIs out, you, you actually get more benefits and it, yeah. it opens up uh, things. So it's not just something that kind of we are just saying here, <laughs> basically, yeah. but it's good that you bring that research point of view here. Um, I also noticed that you were uh, kind of reinventing and re repurposing uh, the table that we did in the API economy book about the public and partner and and, and open APIs. And my question is that there, there has been this kind of almost a dispute actually going on about the concept of open APIs, both in Finland and, and abroad. So what is your take on this openness of APIs or like how to actually define an open API? Did you come across that problem in the research? Not, not much. We were discussing with the side about the how to approach this and, and uh, of course using our own material there there and then we just decided that okay uh, we, we because we have to rely on what we can find as a desktop search so so that's that's open then if it's yeah find, find, findable as, as a as a desktop search yeah so i mean some of the partner apis are also findable yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. so so therefore quite public yeah and, okay. and, and also yeah. relying on on their own definition if they say that yes. this is partner and so okay yeah exactly but yeah it is not easy and and that there is going to be some heavy discussion on that definition topic soon but Thank you. It was a really good presentation on the topic of monetization and with real data to add to that. So it's always good to have research-based evidence. Thank you. Thank you.